Assalamualaikum, I'm Yasmin from Samsaf. As the first speaker, I would like to extend our warm welcome and walk you through the first part of our presentation. To begin with, Sustainable Development Goal 13's primary focus is to urge to this generation to take action to combat climate change and its impact. According to Impact Journal 2011, Zurich has aimed for power consumption reduction by the year 2050, which targets to reduce power consumption from 5,000 watts to 2,000 watts per capita, while CO2 emission from 5.5 metric tons to 1 metric ton. Malaysia is also working hard to fulfill SDG 13. One of the national initiatives is the National Energy Policy 1979 to ensure efficient, secure, and environmentally sustainable supplies of energy, including electricity as cited by Sheikh Jalal 2009. Furthermore, there's the Green Township Policy as administrated in Malacca as an attempt to build a sustainable green city by Subramaniam 2018. Sadly, at present time, COVID-19 pandemic demands the public to stay indoors during movement control order, which has resulted in an inevitable rise in household electricity consumption and has stunted the government's effort of achieving SDG 13's goal. A research by Mustafa 2021 verifies that there was an inevitable increase in household electricity consumption, mainly related to a more prolonged use of electrical appliances during MCO. Additionally, a research by Sulaima 2020 immersed on the uncontrolled consumption of electricity which happened due to lack of awareness among residents to practice home energy efficiency. It is undeniable that human factors and awareness have a tremendous influence on reducing electricity consumption. After looking into previous studies mentioned, we are extremely keen to find out whether a similar pattern exists in our local Samsa community. This has driven our team to carry out a similar research, but with a more restricted scope and focal point that is comparison between students and parents in terms of friends, awareness and actions taken by them to cut down on domestic electricity consumption. Thank you, Yasmin. Now I, Aisha, will explain about the process of our research methodology, primarily the data collection and data analysis. To begin with, we, team from Simsa, had conducted a study which was generally based on a quantitative 27 question survey. The questionnaires were tested on 377 respondents, comprising of 153 students and 204 parents. Considering that our primary research objective is to determine the trend of domestic electric consumption and the level of community awareness, we opted for yes or no response items and utilized the Likert scale items. We investigated deeper into the domain of how respondents act to reduce electricity usage based on one final open-ended question, which was placed at the very end of our questionnaire. Pertaining the distribution of questionnaire, the team had decided to use the simplest yet accessible platform to many, which is none other than Google Form. The current COVID-19 pandemic that restricts us from physically meeting respondents was the reason for opting to Google Form instead. Our study was mainly focused on two groups in terms of community, which were the students and the parents. The duration of the questionnaires being blasted to the public was approximately seven days beginning from the 27th of July until the 2nd of August. Once the data from Google Form was gathered, the team ran data analysis in two separate methods. Descriptive data like figures, percentages, means, and standard divisions were calculated. Meanwhile, inferential data analysis to explore the level of differences between the two groups of respondents was conducted using the independent t-test method in SPSS. To develop a better understanding of the findings for independent t-tests, we tried using an online statistic website called Quick Health. The results were presented in a way that even plain students like us are able to comprehend and digest. Hi, I'm Aina, the third speaker who shall walk you through the descriptive data analysis from our survey. We reference to relationship status, most respondents are married which forms 54.1%, 40.6% comprises of secondary school students, and the least with 5.3% is single individuals. From the chat here, 
it is evident that 86.7% from 377 respondents stated that their household electricity bills has increased, while 12.5% states that no changes in electricity bills. As shown in the graph, we have discovered that most respondents choose refrigerator, handphones, fans, and air conditioners as among the most commonly used appliances at home. The graph on the screen provides information that 33.4% of the respondents uses air conditioning 3 to 6 hours daily, while 23.9% uses it for the duration of 6 to 8 hours. According to PNB Energy Services, air conditioner alone uses a range from 800 to 1,500 watts per hour. Longer duration means more energy in watts being consumed. Hence, more amount of electrical bills we have to pay. From the chat here, 19.9% or 75 respondents mentioned that they use more than 3 air conditioners at home. As we know, the more air conditioners a household has, the more electricity use will be consumed. From this graph, 37.4% of respondents says the temperature for air conditioner at 19 to 22 degrees. Celsius followed by 34% at 23 to 28 degrees Celsius, according to American Society of Heating, Refrigerating and Air Conditioning Engineers in Jane, the compressor will work longer if the temperature is set to a lower level and this will use more electricity. We can clearly see from the chart here that 112 of the respondents answered that they always charge their handphones or computer at night while 82 respondents usually leave these items charging overnight. Once a phone or gadget is fully charged, it will continue to use energy, hence will contribute to the soaring of electrical Thank you, Aina, for the final part of the presentation. I only will enlighten you with more results from our study. It is a team's primary focus to investigate the differences between students and parents in terms of awareness and actions taken to reduce electricity. We managed to get the mean and standard deviation from both groups. Based on the Likert scale interpretation by Pimentel 2010, both groups possess high level of awareness. In the domain of frequency of actions taken by these two groups, again, as we refer to Likert scale for frequency and its interpretation, both groups have high frequency of actions. Using independent t-test inferential data analysis, we found out that there is significant difference in the level of awareness between students and parents. However, when we made the same test to compare these two groups' frequency of actions taken to reduce electricity, we have discovered that there is no significant difference. Thus, we have come to an assumption that most students do not share the same level of awareness compared to their parents, probably because they do not pay the monthly electricity bills. However, when we compare the daily actions taken by these two groups, both perform daily habits to cut down electricity as often as they can. From our data, there are some suggestions that we can consider to raise awareness to use less electricity at home and simultaneously do our bit to save Mother Nature. Among them are using electric appliances when needed only or using electrical appliances with inverter or timer and installing solar panels at home. A similar finding was produced by Azman 2020 who believed that using more energy saving appliances and changing energy consumption behavior could reduce energy consumption. To sum up, our research has shown that using more energy saving appliances is crucial not only to maintain an affordable electricity bill but also lessen the negative impact to the environment. From this study, the team now has better insight on in some South communities' trends and current awareness level as well as their engagement in daily tasks to ensure lesser electricity use at home. Besides adopting some aforementioned suggestions to cut down on domestic electricity consumption, especially during MCO, we are also proposing the school to come up with robust awareness campaigns to save electricity through school social media platforms. Public need to be constantly reminded of their moral responsibilities to reduce electricity usage as we want to leave lesser impact on the present climate change. That marrows the end of our presentation. On behalf of my team, we hope that our study has shed some light on these troubling issues we are facing today. Thank you.